thanks for joining me for today's podcast. I'm speaking to Paul McLaughlin, who has recently been reappointed as chairman of Melons Australia. Paul was previously the vice chairman of NT Farmers and is currently the managing director of both Big Red Produce and Desert Farms. I started the discussion with Paul by asking about his leadership and its beginnings. Again, thank you for joining us and I'll hand over to Paul. I suppose the first leadership role was when I started my own business, contract harvesting, picking cotton when I was about 20 years old and I had 12 people working for me and most of them were older than me. So I was sort of a um, crash course in leadership, what to do, what not to do, what to say and what not to say. And um, so that was, and we were working long hours and I had to obviously management work, but also they lived in caravans and I had to supply food for them. And so that was a, um, a big learning lesson when I was only 20 years old, having 12, 12 people, mostly older than me, managing that. Yeah, so it's been a journey since then, mainly, you know, farms and businesses and had up to, you know, 200 people working for us. And so it's been a, um, a journey, a, definitely a journey, a 30-year journey of learning about leadership and management. That segues quite nicely into the next topic area, which is, do you see a difference between leadership and management? So you've worked in a lot of different organizations and you're working at a board level as well in very senior roles, including chairman now of Melons Australia. Do you think there's a difference between the two? That would be my first question. So we'll go to that first and I've got another follow-up. So is there a difference between leadership and management in your mind? Yeah, 100%. The difference between what I see leadership and management, leadership is the people the people side of things. You can be a manager, but not a leader. But to be a successful manager, you have to be a leader if you've got people working with you. And I think that's one of the things is you don't really have people working under you, you have people working with you. And a leader really has the strategy. And that's my experience sitting on a number of boards and people being there for different reasons, sometimes conflicting. It's because they don't understand that it's not an operational role. It's it's a strategic role. You're setting direction for the organisation and supporting the CEO or whoever it is in it that's doing the day-to-day stuff. So they are the managers. So the managers are really managing the business, which is the systems and processes. That's the nuts and bolts. The day-to-day operations, the week-to-week, month-to-month stuff of mainly KPIs of you know production and costs and all that, you're managing that on a day-to-day basis. So that's management. You know, systems and processes but leadership is inspiring people as a leader you need to know where to go and how to get there and so with melons australia the last 12 months that's what i, was, I set out to do was to reinvigorate the organization and the way we did that was we we got a good team together got a, a great board and then we did a strategic plan and worked out the key things that we think industry what we need to do with industry so that gives vision for, for that organisation and that's the leadership of the industry so that's you know with Melons Australia we've done that with other other organisations and it's quite good to watch you know people get excited about something because there's momentum it's moving forward and you need to have vision you got to have leadership to do that. You made a key distinction there I think in in most people's minds that leadership like you said is about the strategy and and the, the bigger visions whereas if you looked at the management side of things and it's not only this but it's focused on the operations of the business so again you've been in your industry for a long time and I might get you to think about this in, in as, as sort of high level of perspective as you can without getting too granular just to start with is do you think the skill sets are there for good good effective leadership and management in the industries that you've been in or is that always an ongoing sort of a work in work in progress i think you've got to keep on bringing new leadership in new blood a good leader probably can only successfully lead an organization for five to seven years i think that's leadership if, if you're getting the most out of the people and the organization management's a different thing as i was discussing that it's the systems and processes unfortunately what actually happens is leaders slip back into a management role and it just becomes the mundane day in day out the nuts and bolts and they're not inspiring the people they're not looking at the people and saying what do they want out of this organization and and how can we work together to get common goals? And I've seen that many times over the years with employing my own managers that when people don't have a vision, it's, it's mundane and they're just turning up to work, doing their job, but 
to create momentum, you've got to have vision, and that's leadership. Leadership's able to um, communicate that vision. Leaders are often asked to make decisions, and I know that you as a chairman would have had to make decisions on lots of different things at different times, some decisions more difficult than others. I've often term this as something called the lonely road of leadership. Now, I didn't come up with that terminology, that phrasing, obviously, but um, is that process of leading actually a lonely pathway or is it as lonely as you make it when you're making decisions as a leader? Interesting you say that. Fortunately, I was mentored very young in, in my 20s. I was managing a cotton farm and the owner and the manager of the farm I invited him for dinner because his family is away. And he said to me, he said, Paul, this is the first time I'm invited to an employee's place for dinner for a long, long time. And I went, really? And then he, he, then he explained, he said, you know, when you're the boss, it's a lonely place. And he said, people relate to you very differently when you're the manager or leader. I've often talked about that and thought a lot about it, why it is. But leadership is thankless. <laughs> you very rarely ever get thanked. You get judged a lot, <laughs> but you don't get thanked. It's always a thankless task, leadership. And that's, that's reality of leadership or management. Yeah, it's much easier to be one of the boys than it is. But, you know, when you've got an organisation, you have to be the leader. Something that sort of came into my mind that I think that's the reality of once you stick your head up over the parapet. And I think what I'm hearing is leadership is a choice. So when you choose to be a leader, you choose the good and bad that comes with it. And at times, yeah, I, I can agree with you that, yeah, you're on your own making decisions. And how do you keep the professional from becoming the personal? Do you see some tension there at times that you've got to try and keep those two worlds separate? I don't think, it, I don't think it's that. I've thought lots about it. And I don't think it is that because we'll have up to 30 people in our in our home every month. We have we have farm dinners on our farm and invite all the, everyone on the farm. It's not that. And, and just after my wife and I were married, we were renting a house on a farm and we invited the guy that owned the house and his wife for dinner one night. And this guy was one of the wealthiest men I ever met. He owned Manildra Flower. His name was Jack Honan. He died about... 20 years ago now he, he said yeah i'll come and I'll, I'll bring a chook you do the veggies i'll bring the chook and he bought this chook and he stuffed it with apricots and it was beautiful this chook was just beautiful and, and when he arrived his wife says paul this is the first time we've been to anyone's place for dinner in 30 years and this guy i used to go and visit his house every sunday and pay my rent and most sundays i'd get there and he'd have a dinner cooked for me and there'd be someone else there for dinner he goes oh this is great my wife cooked a beautiful dessert and we sat and talked and, and his wife said we better go home he said oh, i'm enjoying this i haven't been to any, anyone's place for 30 years for dinner you don't expect thanks you don't expect too much when you're a leader. Let me ask you this, Paul, measuring success. Now, this question's around how do you measure success as a leader? So is it is it just KPIs or is it something else? You can't measure success. Most people measure success with material possessions and money in the bank, but that's not success. If you want to build a legacy and and to, to make a difference in this world, you've got to really invest in people. And that, that's very hard to measure. And so success to me is really about people that you work with, understanding what their goals are and giving them opportunities. So in, in our businesses, it's really about giving other people opportunities. And when I look at businesses, I don't look at a business. I look at the people that are going to work in that business and how I can invest in them and reward them too. And so it's very important to be to reward people. And so to me, if we have a good season, I, I definitely reward the people that have made the effort. To, uh, success is never a, something that you can measure and put a number on. It's really about people. I'm not surprised with that response, given the, the stories that you've shared before. And I think at times there'll be some leaders that, that will either combine that with KPIs or they'll find some way to measure it. Because I think with what I've seen in my leadership travels is there is often an incessant need to try and put a number against something to see how you're tracking. But if I'm hearing you right, if you have invested in your people and you've got someone that's come up from a junior to you know, someone who's managing a team of people who's eventually leading the joint, that's quite a good return on your investment because that person's developed in your business and helped your business to grow. And that benefits everyone around that person, including the person who owns the business. So fully understand where you're coming from on that. You've obviously seen that in your travels in working for industry bodies. Is that fair, call? 
Oh, definitely. And not just in um, Australia. I've travelled a lot overseas. And it's probably, I saw it probably more in America than any, anywhere else where they celebrate success and they create a, in their work environment, they create like a family. There's a, a farm, a melon farm, very large melon farm in California. It's called Perry Farms. And so when you go and visit there, they welcome you like family and they'll take you out for lunch. They welcome you. These are our family from Australia sort of thing. And these main guys, managers on the farm, they come too. And you go out for lunch together. And to me, that's it's relationships, you know. That's that's to me is that's success. That's success. That's you know, at the end of the day, we all lie there in that box. It, it's not about the money. No one ever says, I wish I had had a bigger box to put more money in. And and it's and it's never about a conveyor system, you know. I think a lot of people get a bit sidetracked and think this world's about a big conveyor system. How much you, can you accumulate and put on this conveyor and one day it's all going to drop in the hole with you? But it's it doesn't. There's only so much you can drop in that hole. But what you leave behind is really your success. And that's really people. That's incredibly important to note. Thank you for sharing that. Now, the next... Paul, the next area I'd like to talk to you about, if we could, is to just leader capability. So again, you've, you've had some time in the world of work, you've run businesses, you've, you've been on boards and so on. Do you think there's a, a list of some key leader capabilities you think effective leaders need to have? I think good leaders are listeners. You've got to be able to ask the right questions. Um, le- le- learning to learn learn to ask the right questions of your people, but also not just your people you're working with, but also to look outside your own industry or your own and learn from other people. So leaders are always looking for new ideas and then seeing how that can help their organisation or it's a business or whatever it is. So you've got to have a very open mind. You've got to to ask the right questions. I think also leaders have the ability to look beyond today. So there's lots of things that come up, throw you off track a bit, but when you've got a vision and you know where you're going, then you always, sometimes you've got to take a sidetrack to to get there, but you know where you're going. And and that ability to stay focused is so important. And even in my own life, I think the times I've gone off, I've seen the highs and lows of business. And I think when you get distracted and you get off track, that's when you're most vulnerable. But I look at politicians and and they they got such thick skin, you know, like you, they get thrown lots of mud, <laughs> cool mud, and, it, and you just can't let that mud stick, you know what I mean? They just don't let the mud stick. They've got in their brains, unfortunately, I don't have that brain, but in that brain, they're so, no, nah, this is what I'm doing. They get so that um, it doesn't show them off, off track, you know what I mean? So I think that's important. Can I ask when you talk when you use the example of the polys, you're meaning to be resilient, yeah, to have some resilience in what you do as a leader. Is that is that what you're talking about? Oh, hundred percent. Like you, you, if you see a politician, and I see some at the moment, see some at the moment that are cracking under the pressure, and they are not making themselves available to people. They're actually hiding. That's not a good leadership style. Need to be open. Leaders need to be open to be approachable and have a high level of integrity. People people want to follow people with integrity. And so when someone says they're going to do something, you need to do it. That's very important. If you're going to be a leader, if you want good people, you need to have good integrity. Yeah, kind of like the standard you walk by is the standard you're prepared to accept, yeah? That's it, 100%. Yep. I think another quality time management because when you have a lot of things going on yeah there's always a lot of things to be done so you've got to be able to prioritize your time is is very important but also delegate and I think one of the things probably more recently last 10 years of my life is you know they use that time micromanagement but to actually trust people communicate clearly what your expectations are communicate very clearly what your expectations are and then or let them make mistakes that's the very important thing to when you're in leadership and management is you can't do it all yourself <laughs> you can't do it all yourself i remember one time a guy came he's an older guy and he came to me one afternoon and he says paul these guys are not doing this this is happening and this and that and i said yeah mate have you ever tried picking ten thousand tons of melons by yourself and he laughed and he, he every about two or three years he reminded me that he go, paul you ever tried to pick 10,000 tonnes of melons by yourself? you got to allow people not to do it exactly how you want it, but there's more than one way to skin a cat. 
And um, so it's the end goal that you've got to make sure and manage to make sure it's on track. Yeah. So let me ask you this, Paul, the, the nature versus nurture question. Are leaders born or are they made? I think both. There's definitely, there's definitely people that are born leaders, 100%. And I see it more, I pick it a lot quicker now with the seasonal workers we get from different countries. We've got three different nationalities here on a seasonal workers program. And usually within a few days, you can pick out the leaders in, in the group. And they're usually not the ones that have been given that position. They're asking the questions. You can pick them because they, they're asking the questions. They want the bigger picture of what's going on here. And then they communicate with their, with their people. And they're the ones that come to you and say, oh, yeah, this guy needs this or whatever. They're the leaders that are watching out for their people, you know. But they are the, lead, they are the true leaders. They can be developed 100%, but there's others that are born leaders. So, yeah, definitely. Some are, some are born and some can be made. We're almost at the end of the, the discussion here, man. So I've got two, it's a two-parter about your leadership pathway. So what have you learned looking back? Synthesize if you can. What have you learned on your journey as a leader? It's about being intentional. Like I think leaders have to be intentional about what they're doing. They're not wishy-washy. They know where they're going. And and to listen to people, you, you, you have to listen to people, ask the right questions. But it's not a race. Life isn't a race. Leadership isn't a race. It's, it's a journey. And and in that journey, you need to look at your own own life and, and understand that you, you're not perfect. But to maintain that pace, it's very important. You take time for yourself too and your, and your family. And that's, there's a cost. Every, everything you do has a cost in life. Leadership has a big cost. And I think you know, coming to a point where you, you go, at the end of the day, family is very, you know, family is very important. And so taking time for your family on a daily basis and spending time together, going on adventures, making memories, that's very, very important. What do you believe uh, from your, again, from your perspective, is the most critical, the most critical issues when it comes to leadership development in your industry at the moment? If you had to look away, what do you need for leader development? Is there something that stands out for you? Well, I think as an industry, we're all very busy. And so I think the first thing we need to do is, I don't know, just make, we, we need more people that can see value in putting time into an industry. Because we don't have those people, we can't train up those leaders. And so whether they see there's a pathway or whether there's a benefit to them, yeah, I'm not sure. But it's not just in melon industry. It's all industries that people are time poor. And to take on a role you know, as an industry, it's very thankless. But we need more people to do it. I don't really have an answer there, really. It's okay. Sorry to interrupt. I, th I think you're bringing it out quite strongly, the, that representative stuff. And... I think where you get to the meat of this, and this is difficult in any industry. I think the hard thing for people coming into a, a an industry body is to take off their own self-interest hat. It's very, very hard what I've seen for people to take their own hat off and put on an industry hat and take a perspective of, of a majority of industry and to say what, what is really best for the industry how, how can we improve this? How is this going to be better in two years, five years' time? It's very hard for people to take that take that hat off and take put an industry hat on. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. I've been speaking to Paul McLaughlin. Paul, thank you for your time, mate. Yeah, thanks very much, Eric. It's been good. Thank you. Thanks again for joining us today. I've been speaking to Paul McLaughlin, the chairman of Melons Australia. This podcast is one in a series of discussions regarding leadership. Again, thank you for joining me and we'll catch you all on the next podcast.